Hi everyone and welcome to video four. We're picking right up where we left off in the previous one. Okay, so in this next part, we're going to look at adding dependencies between constraints, queries and events, and maybe also trying to find some bounded context candidates. So um, we'll start again at the beginning probably and uh, work our way towards the end uh, with the goal of making more design choices in this session. Probably not the final design yet, um, but the goal at least is to start to see potential bounded context candidates that we then can dive deeper into uh, to design those uh, in even more detail. Okay, so a technique that we're going to use is um, finding dependencies between constraints and events. Um, what, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to add arrows uh, like this, dotted arrows um, between a, yeah, a constraint, basically from the constraint towards an uh, event. And that means, this arrow means that in order for this constraint to make a decision, it needs the information of, a, of that event or of multiple events. Just to be clear, when we're doing the event storming, where uh, time flows from left to right, uh, that doesn't mean that a dependency cannot go forward. Yeah, um, we're really thinking uh, these dependencies we're thinking structurally. What are the different type of events a constraint needs to make a decision? Okay, um, and the same thing, of course, can happen um, with, instead of with a constraint. We can also do this with a query. Um, what information does this query need yeah, to give a response, to give an answer? So that information and in the way we modeled it so far comes from events uh, that that means that our flow actually might look like this this constraints need information from this query but in the end we're really interested in what is the event that caused well that actually uh, has the information okay let's add this to the legend um, i'll move the legend around enlarge it a little bit so that is that is one thing we're going to do and the second thing is we're going to start drawing some boundaries around uh, our messages that we have and these are going to be potential bounded context just to be clear they're not we, we don't we're not making final decisions yet okay? so we we are going to call them probably bounded context but as long as we are not finished they're not really bounded context yet it's more like this is potentially a bounded context. Okay. Um, so if I look at the beginning, we actually start with a with a rather hard one um, because uh, it has. Uh, let me group this so I can easily move it. Um, it says show overview of a station nearby with availability and rate. Um, and so probably for the availability, we can have a look at. Um, if we want to know the availability, we, for example, we need to uh, look at these events. Uh, um, the station reserved for a bike and also, um, well, we don't need to know about the bike was not reserved, but we will need to know about something like a bike became available again. Um, let me just add it here. Bike became available um, and I don't think we've modeled that yet no we don't have that one no we didn't model it yet so I'm just going to add it here and then of course another one that we're going to need is um, uh, rate was calculated that's something we deleted because we said it's not really needed but when we're drawing dependencies we see that it's uh, actually useful. So I, I, I'm going to clean up a little bit and I'm going to remove these mockups uh, uh, 
from from what we have um, just so they don't clutter what we're doing we still have them in the in the other uh, event storming of course uh, probably we're going to uh, need to look at more than than just the um, yeah these events and and as you can see we we added this one why um but it's like more of we we know we're going to need something like this it's not clear yet if this is going to be the actual event uh, what i also sometimes do is i'll add like another event with three dots meaning we're not done yet yeah, for some of the constraints that we're going to see it's going to be easy for some it's going to be much harder okay so um yeah let me make sure that we definitely have enough space okay we we cleaned up our board a little bit uh, and gave ourselves a lot more space uh, so that uh, this video can go a little bit more fluently so um let's let's move on eh? um we can um uh, I'll, I'll move this as well a little bit so and then we we get into uh, yeah we know this query probably has more dependencies um, and then at some point we we have the accept read and write and, and start write now what i would probably already doing is i'm going to look for bounded context candidates and my first intuition is really going to be about language. Um, and, and so when I'm, again, my, I, I'm not going to make my boundaries um, perfect or anything. I just start doing things and we'll, we'll change this. Um, the first one, I, I see the right and I'll give it a color as well, make it a little bit uh, less uh, dark and then hey, this is right so um, we, we have the accept um, rate and start right and that, that's that's what I'm using um, I don't know yet if this query should be part of it or not um, that's something I want to look at later I first want to uh, yeah look at this and of course I'm then going to move this uh, further for all the things that belong into it now there is actually uh, uh, if we look at this we we see positive saldo required to start the right but we don't so if i add uh, the constraints i don't think we actually uh, yeah we also removed our uh, bundle was bought um, yeah we in the beginning i think we called it bundle was bought balance was topped up we still need to make that language yeah. clear but as it's not part of our main flow i would not bother too much about it the only thing i do see here is that we we're talking completely well a lot of the terms are not really specific for ride but really about bundles and a balance and saldo um so i'm Again, I'm not sure, just, su just a suggestion. I'm thinking maybe this can be part of a different bounded context that we call bundles. Um, and yeah, that we need to fi figure out more. So the, the thing is, um, this one is so we have two constraints you cannot start multiple rides at the same time that that feels to me like well this is not going about it's not about bundles it's really about the ride so uh, that's part of the bounded context right for me so far okay um, the this one on the other hand is more of yeah we we uh, hey, we need a positive saldo so what i ah yeah you're already adding dependencies make sure Sorry. you change the the line uh, type. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, 
Maybe we should cho choose the striped ones actually because it's going to be clearer. Let, let's use yeah, the striped the one. Yeah, the dots is not very clear. Um, so yeah. this one, um, I'm thinking maybe instead of um, a constraint, what this actually is, is this is a query. Yeah? We're asking, what is there a positive saldo required? Uh, well, no. Sorry, let me undo that. You can your change cannot be undone. Okay. Okay. Um, so what I'm what I'm thinking here is that um, yeah, ride and bundles could be two different bounded contexts, um, and it's true that we have a constraint on ride that there needs to be a positive saldo, but I think we we have um, different ways of designing this. Um, so one, yeah, one way, um, let me, let me maybe show you. So here we could say, well, we need to have a positive saldo required. Uh, one way could be that we query, uh, bundles. Yeah, what is the current saldo? Uh, and how I often visualize that is like this so it's right that sends the query to bundles and bundles gives the reply back to right and then we have that information uh, right now uh, to make to make that decision and then of course we need to change those arrows uh, like this and we change uh, those arrows like this. So the query still needs to know about all these things. The write needs to know only about there is a query on bundles. What do you think about that? Um, when I write uh, queries, I try to be as specific as possible. Uh, I, I find it handy later later on. Um, so I changed it really to like, what is the current saldo for Rider X? Because that's what we want to know. Yeah. Um, true. Yeah. So so that that is uh, I, I said there are multiple ways of doing it. Um, this is one way where we're actually querying. And that means that it's in theory it's possible that after we queried it. Um, yeah that the saldo changes and that before we actually made the decision that the saldo is already not up to date anymore. So, yeah, in this case, I think it's perfectly okay. There are cases though, and, and maybe we'll show that with the reservation of the bike, we can, we can show the difference there. In the case of the reservation of the bike, if there is only one bike available, we should never allow another bike. Uh, we should never allow a positive answer. So we, we cannot easily work with queries there. We'll, we'll show that when we get there. Um, yeah, so in this case, eh, what we do is we accept the rate. We cannot start multiple rides at the same time. Feels like part of a bounded context. Um, we, um, yeah, we need to look at ride was started and also look at uh, ride was canceled, ride was uh, so when you do this, hey, when you look at the dependencies, I think it's a very good exercise, um, but it can like uh, make your board very messy. So that so, so at some point you will probably want to move those events closer. Um, hey, but it's actually very useful to have a look at. Uh, so here we have ride was stopped. And I think these are, so we have now ride was started, ride was canceled by us, ride was canceled by us, ride was canceled by user, by rider, sorry, and then ride was stopped. I think yeah. those are them. Um, the, the, so hey, if you zoom out and you can immediately see, okay, you have lots of dependencies. If you overlap that with the bounded context colors, and you see that you have lots of dependencies towards different bounded contexts that might hint you towards maybe the design is not optimal because you would have lots of dependencies on other bounded contexts. 
Okay, ready to continue? Yes. Okay, so I think we can just extend this and say, okay, now the rider accepted the rate uh, per minute. Um, and then we get into the um, reserve bike. Uh, I would, yeah, my uh, first instinct is to, yeah, put this in a different bound of context. Sure. I'm uh, not sure. How, how would we call it? Uh, uh, bike availability. Sure. Uh, something like that. Um, Again, we, we're not making decisions yet. Eh? So uh, no. in, in the beginning, I, I, I probably also go for um, having too many bounded contacts that we can later join up again. That's m like my first step, probably. Everything that feels like it could be a different bounded context, putting it in something different. So I guess this is going to be like the boundary for it yeah. uh, in this case. I uh, think the ride would, yeah, the ride would tell the bike reserve. Yeah, so this means the ride gives a command to bike availability and it would be a ride again that uh, listens to the outcome of it and continues um, what is happening. Eh? Okay, so yeah. while well, a bike must be available, that's actually also um, this one. one where we need to look at what are the dependencies there. Yeah. Uh, I'm checking. Uh, well, we didn't do it, eh, but it's going to be the same yeah. event as this one. Eh? So I'll put that there and and um, I'm going to uh, put that one there as well, because we probably are going to have more. Um, so wh why do we put the three dots and don't model more? I think because we're first designing like, hey, let's try to find out bigger structures a little bit. It's true that what the events that come out here might influence the design so yeah it's yeah it's a choice that we make right now we could make the other choice it feels like to me that finding the bigger structures is probably a better way of starting than going everywhere like really deep on everything yeah yeah i agree so, um, one thing I wanted to come back to and interrupt me if you sort of um, made that clear, but um, why aren't we doing this, Thomas? Because it is an option. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's true. That that's an option. Um, um, that that's a that's a good question. Why why not? Um, because uh, of right now for me the reason i did it was just to keep things consistent not because it was a um, a very explicit decision yet so we said here eh, it's a uh, right that sends a command to bike availability so it, that means right knows about bike availability by doing this as well now bike availability also needs to know about right uh, and knowing about, I mean, having like a stronger dependency. If I do it the other way around um, eh, and do it like this, this means that um, eh, on the left, right knows about bike availability. And here it's also right knowing about about bike availability. It's not bike bike availability doesn't have any dependencies on right but right has a dependency on bike availability. We could switch that around, but it's not going to be lots of, so that, that is the decision I haven't taken explicitly yet, like switching it around. Um, mm -hmm. But what I do often feel is that having the, the dependency always in the same direction is probably a good idea, like not having both depending, uh, dependent on each other. Do you agree with that? 
Okay, but so again, I haven't made the decision yet if it should be bike availability that has dependency on the right or the other way around. Although I think I, I like if I think about it a little bit more, um, it feels like ride is the whole process. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, so that is going to be like, yeah, the coordination of different kinds of things and not uh, by like, and then bike availability doesn't really need to know about that. Bike availability mm -hmm. could be a bounded context where we uh, sent the uh, query to like, hey, give me uh, the bi the available bikes at every station, for example. Uh, that that is that's an option. It's just I, I'm not sure about it yet. So one remark here. Um, in this case, hey, we could have. Um, I'll try to uh, quickly show this underneath and hopefully don't duplicate too much. So. Let me show you an alternative design. Uh, so here eh, we're doing it with a query. Why are we not doing the same thing here? Um, yeah, I think the language already shows it a little bit, but let's make it uh, very clear yet. So why are we not doing uh, anything like, is there a bike available? at station x or let, y and why why are we not doing it like that do i answer my own question probably yes ah. <laughs> oh. yeah I, th I thought you were asking a uh, rhetorical question someone oh no 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 i i i'm <laughs> yeah um uh, um because uh because of the 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 must in there a bike must be available um whenever i see the word like must and um things like that um i try to model them as uh sort of a uh, hard constraint and when you do it with a query um you cannot guarantee uh, a hard constraint because you're working with uh, data that might be inconsistent, right? Mm -hmm. Because your query models could be um, inconsistent. Uh, so that is why um, I think it's better to model that with command and event, because you then can guarantee uh, that there will be indeed a bike available um, for that person. Yeah, that's that's completely correct. I think even if you even if your query would be always up to date. You could still make an incorrect decision because the moment after you receive the answer it can already be out of date eh? someone else could yeah if, what if what happens if two people pick the same ride at the same time and they arrive at exactly the same time here the bike availability will answer yes for both of them but it should only be allowed to answer yes for one of them and so um, the reservation pattern that we uh, implemented here, make sure that you can only have uh, one at a time. With that, uh, well, we, we will need to enforce that in in, um, in implementation, of course. And we will need to enforce that reserve bike uh, is handled one by one so that we can only, uh, yeah, reserve, if two requests come in to reserve a bike for the only remaining bike only one of them should re answer true for the query even if you do them one by one your answer will be two times yes because your eh, the, the the system that uses the information of your query might not be finished yet eh, and and so you're going to be answering yes two times yeah um and and either way like that reservation has to happen right so you can't just replace it with a query you just need to yeah. make it more complicated because yeah. you have to reserve it eventually yeah um, completely correct yeah. 
and get these weird designs that then commands come out of queries because something queried and then oh now we have to actually reserve because they asked for this information so you get a big mess uh as well so it's not not that good um to do okay so um yeah when they, there is a bike reserved we can uh we can now start our ride um and i think this is all part uh, this is definitely all part of um uh, our right um bounded context here yeah? um mm -hmm. and then we move on and now we get to um some of the yeah uh yeah really interesting parts i think maybe we should mm -hmm. use some other notation like for the station uh, maybe we will have maybe we'll only have one bounded context on the software of the station maybe multiple but i would like to like visualize what happens on the software of the station because we're sure that that's a different system and we didn't yeah. make any decisions about are, are the bounded context right bike availability bundles if that's different systems or not I don't think it matters yet but we do know that station has a different system so we might need to treat it differently okay so um, let's give this a different color as well um, well something like this so in order the yeah the scan QR code we can say that's a command that gets sent to the station eh? um, well you we're not it's not the it's not the station though that scans it eh? it's the station that displays a, a, a qr code so maybe we need yeah. to um be uh, yeah. Definitely, yeah definitely have this like this is uh on the station yeah the, the right, is it? yeah go ahead is this it's the station that's going to generate a qr code and then send the token to the back end right well not necessarily yeah so that that's where we so what what needs to happen is the station needs to the the minimal thing that needs to happen is the station needs to display a token okay something needs to decide that when that token is used um and the right is started that everything is okay i, I say something mm -hmm. that doesn't need to be the system uh, the station but then the station at least needs to be informed of that decision so that the station can unlock it what is also important yeah. the app of the user cannot communicate with the station directly eh? otherwise we would not need the qr code um eh? so the the app yeah. communicates with the backend the backend communicates with the station no communication between the app and the station but so we we need to make so it could be that um let me think through it so one option could be that when the ride is started that the backend generates a token sends that over to the station the station shows that token as a qr code the um, user scans it and the backend verifies it and sends a command to the station yeah it's okay you can unlock your bike um mm -hmm. that that's one option um another option is that the station generates uh time based tokens or something and um and the backend has a way of verifying that um that might maybe feels a bit more complex maybe we need to just model a few of these yep. um is it so what i'll um i will need more space eh? so i'll move stuff away from here let me try to model what i first said eh? so i'm going to introduce a new bounded context without a name it might be part of ride it might be part of something else i just don't know yet um, and let's say it listens to write was started for now just a suggestion eh? and it says mm -hmm. um, generate 
token. I'm um, going to then say, okay, token was generated. Then we would have, we would send the token to the station. Um, the station, of course, receives that command and um, ge generates a QR code. We'll always have a QR code was displayed. Mm -hmm. um, and then a bit later, the QR code would be scanned, but now we're not in that bounded context or in the, and now we're not, we're not sending, we're not scanning the QR code towards the station, but towards that thing we didn't give a name yet. Um, mm -hmm. Then we said basically, yeah, okay, it must have rights, token must match. Okay, the rider proved that they're at the station. So at this point in time, we could now say, um, yeah, uh, unlock a bike. Yeah, so that is that is one potential um, solution. Yeah. One problem I see with this, uh, Thomas, yeah. is that it listens to right was started. Mm -hmm. But we already mentioned that that does not mean a rider is yeah. actually at the station. Yeah. So then there would be a QR code displayed and no rider to scan it. Yes. But the rider just isn't there. Yes. So that's definitely uh, not okay. Um, yeah, I think that me that that you have a very good point there, and I think it means that the station needs to generate tokens um, because the no. we cannot know which uh rider arrives at the station um so we don't know which token to display um yeah, that we got from the back end that's that's a that's a really uh good thing so that basically means this design doesn't work so let's start from the right was started again let's say we um, the station now listens to it um, it um, so just to be clear we, we we have multiple options we could say the station um, generates qr codes every every 10 seconds or whatever eh, and uses and and so it just keeps on displaying them that's one option uh, the the other option is that there is a button on there that and then you display it um, I think it doesn't yeah I think it doesn't matter Let, let's say um, I'm going to remove the right was started for a second because I don't think the station actually needs it so if we have generate QR code always QR code was displayed and we then have this mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the now the station uh, let's call this generate token uh, and the token is displayed as a QR code so they yep. scan the QR code tokens must match means we have um, that, that basically means that there needs to be um, yeah uh, we need some algorithm to determine yeah that the token that is in there is actually generated by that station and is uh, generated within some time frame we, we really need to validate that um, and so I'll, I'll rename this to something I, I a word that I don't use but I'm going to say a token must be valid the reason that I don't like the word valid is because 
when you need to implement it you don't really know what valid means um, so we hear um, what does valid mean uh, that's something we need to figure out but i would say let's leave it out of scope because that's going to be very technical in nature right? yep. um, i'm thinking something like the two-factor authentication time-based algorithms uh, should be usable here yep. and then we can we can continue the same thing and we can say okay unlock a bike so we would have the same um, we have the same design with the uh, but the only thing that we remove this part yeah. this yeah. is removed in return we will get some complexity in how to generate the token because if the backend generates it it's trivial eh? uh, if the backend does it it can just generate a random string store it somewhere validate but here we're saying well we cannot do that because yeah the rider is not at station yet so no. Um, I do think that um, whatever this thing is, it needs to get that token because if we draw a dependency uh, between those, if you want to validate, we actually need oh. that. We don't really need the QR code, but we need the token. Um, not necessarily. Yeah. If we upfront. Um, have that that's what i meant with the two-factor authentication eh? if you mm -hmm. um, know how to generate a token if both of them know um, then well then they need to make sure yeah they need to have been set up correctly but then you don't need to communicate every token that you generate you can basically verify what the backend can verify is is this token uh sent over by this station in this time frame yep. uh, so but that but that's true you have a, you have a good point there that's also an option eh? um, it could be that we uh, just send over every token uh, that, that's also an option I would say the uh, so uh, let's well the, the design will actually look exactly or, or like almost exactly the same so we could duplicate it as well in your case um yeah we're, we're going to yeah probably change a little bit maybe um and then we can call this token must match um, so the difference uh, is subtle in in um this scenario we send over over tokens from the station to the backend and in this scenario it's going to be more like a shared uh, secret algorithm so that the both of them can generate a token and see if they're valid um both of these choices don't really impact the overall design though so i'd say let's uh leave this choice to an ex actual expert on uh generation of tokens and so on yes but it is a good thing like we mapped out uh, three versions it's good to, to think about it it's even interesting to to map out um that which didn't work mm -hmm. like um like i very quickly understood like oh this is not going to work but i wanted it mapped out uh, first completely um because it can also sort of give you valuable information if you say like this is not going to work but what can we learn from it well we learned from it that the station and there's something here we don't know and we can actually reuse that to make something that can work no. um, so um a really good point because while i was designing it i completely forgot about hey this cannot actually work because i was just focused on the actual design so that's also yep. a reason why doing this with multiple people is also super valuable um okay so what we now said we're going to pick any of these two um the top one 
we know it doesn't work but we'll keep it there um so uh, we we still need to make some decisions here eh? um the thing is now that i don't have the top one as an option i'm starting to lean towards um that this question mark box is mostly right might be something else but almost all of the uh if we look at the constraints must have a right started at this station well that's something that writes knows um the tokens must much or must be valid okay that's some specific knowledge that we might um put somewhere else um but the fact that they prove that they're at the station and that the right then says to the station okay now it's up to you you can unlock a bike that is all responsibility of the right okay so we cleaned it a little bit up we moved the one that doesn't work out of the way and we uh, entered one of the two in between in the yeah in the algorithm uh, just to be clear here um i'm going to change this boundary a little bit because right now there is no one interested in the right was started except the right itself because there is no there is no link here and also note that we try to keep our boundaries correct as far as possible um, this means right now it means generate token is like an internal command um, we could like i said we could say that it's based on a button but let's assume for now that we just uh, generated every uh every second every 10 seconds or every 30 seconds whatever uh the people who are experts on this say uh, and we can also annotate it like this um so it's it's an internal command it doesn't listen to anything it's based on time okay so and then does, like does uh, go ahead. Mean, Thomas, sorry does this mean that we need to extend here because qr code was this place also stays within the station right this yeah. does not go any further yeah yeah the only uh, this is actually kind of a a special case because well the fact that we display them on the screen is actually um something we show so but but i i yeah that, that's something i i don't have strong opinions on where where the boundary should be yeah. yeah um okay but so then um like i said i probably want to rename uh i think miro had something where you could uh, you can copy the styles now so copy style paste style that's good uh, so i'm going to call this ride as well the only thing of course is that we have the um going to move this out of the way for a second uh, the only thing is the token must be validate uh, must be valid so we could still what we could still do is um do something like um we could put a query in between here eh? um say oops is this token valid question mark make it a query um and that is something we could send to this other thing that's able to uh, validate tokens that we don't have a name for yet um, that is probably how i would do it right now and then we yeah then we can actually validate the constraint that means they prove they're at the station and then we can say to the station now you can unlock a bike um maybe one thing that is important here um is that i'm saying unlock a bike i'm not saying that's the bike you need to unlock mm -hmm. yeah um, because we said no specific bike needed yet at this point just make sure that there is a bike reserved i do see one problem with our design though mm -hmm. Um, I think I might see it too, but go ahead. Yeah, I think like bike availability, if does is bike availability part of the station or not? That's that's what my 
um, that's what my potential issue is here like if if we have something that's not on the station that decides if a bike is available but station is a separate hardware entity with its own software it's going to be hard to keep those decisions in sync probably or it's going to require uh, extra work i had a thought in a similar style but a bit differently i was thinking i am wondering if the software of a station would be able to right you say unlock a bike to the station um, and i'm wondering if they could or if we need something in between something like this just gonna dry it out a bit uh that actually determines a specific bike uh and then uh gives this scenario and says well unlike bike x i'm not sure the hardware software of the station could deal with just you know yep. keeping track i think that i think that's a decision we need to make do we make the software on the station as dumb as possible uh, mm -hmm. so at the least amount of responsibilities on there or do we give it more responsibilities um, if if just as a general intuition here i and, I, and that's something I, I i sometimes recommend is like if we need to change the software of stations that's probably going to be harder than changing our backend uh, software hey, we will we'll have lots of station deployed hopefully we can upgrade them in an easy way but it's not really sure so if we can keep the software simpler on our stations um, we have less risks of things going wrong hey, it's if something goes wrong on a station and we don't have control over it again we don't we need to move over there um and and yeah so that that's one and it's probably also harder to up, uh, upgrade them all so if we keep it simpler and keep the complexity low on the stations um uh, that's probably a good choice although this is yeah. one of these things that i think that's a general good intuition but it's not always the best uh yeah sometimes might not be the best yeah no, I agree, but it's like it's a similar um, intuition that, you know, changing the software on the hardware um, might be a lot harder. Yeah. Uh, so you might want to go for something like uh, like this, try to give it a different color, uh, you know, something in between. Yeah. Something, it's also like stations, but its sole purpose is actually to have that complicated logic that you don't want to put on the software of your station itself. So you put something before there and everything talks to that. And then that actually talks to your hardware yeah. in a much simpler way. Yeah. The only issue we have is that the G right now, the QR token generation is something that lives there. And that's, uh, it's not going to be a very complex piece of software, but that's already some complexity. It only has to generate tokens to it and display them. So it's not super complex. Um, yeah. Then I would, like for things like that, um, I also would uh, look at the, the rate yeah. of change. Because, um, you know, how you sort of select a bike uh, and all that kind of thing, um, seems to me it's going to change faster than how do I generate a token or how do I generate a QR code. Yeah. So, you know, once the software of QR codes is deployed on the hardware, probably does not have to change that often while with the context of unlocking a bike i can see that change more often um which is why i'm okay with one actually living on that hardware and the other one i would keep off of it yeah okay so we we try to our design choice here is that we try to keep the software off the actual stations as simple as possible yeah. uh, and and um we know the QR code generation is probably not possible to offload, but as you said, it should have a slower rate of change than uh, bike selections. Okay, so he, what if I, um, I, I mean, 
I'm, I'm not, no, I, my idea was I wanted to maybe copy this bounded context into the station um, because they feel like they're going to have to make the same decisions. Uh, we're, we're not there yet. So maybe let's first split that up and then afterwards we can see if they actually should be the same thing. Yeah, I had the same thought by the way, but I deliberately yeah, did not do it because I was not sure about it yet. Yeah. Okay. So I put station. Okay, that's good. Uh, the only thing I'm going to rename it to uh, bike selection at station um, or something or bike selection of a station. I want to be really explicit about what this thing is doing. Okay. And I'm not going to call this unlock a bike, but like select a specific bike from the station. Yeah. yeah. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I actually want to, I'm not sure, but I, my feeling is that I want to maybe unlock uh, that I want to put right in between. I'm not sure if this is a good choice, hey, but so in this case, yeah, yeah we, we select one. Um, we have some constraints and then we select it, for example, selected bike X. And then the right would listen to that and it would unlock uh, that bike. I think for me, the question would be if Ride needs to know which yes. bike was selected for another reason. Yeah. If we have no reason Ride should know about bike X, then I would not put Ride in between no. there. That would be overkill. Yes, I, I completely agree with you. There is only one other reason I would also do it is again, dependencies. Like for me, it right now in my head, bike is really uh, the orchestrator of the whole uh, ride is the orchestrator of the whole ride process and i want to keep this uniform right now but i but i do agree maybe we need to uh like remove this afterwards so um you, it could be that we uh, that that is also an option that we scratch this and that bike selection immediately talks to station that yep. is that is also definitely an option so I'm just going to put it down here as an option. Eh? Other option, remove uh, right uh, from here. Okay. So that is the other option we have. Okay, so then we, I, I guess we can uh, continue we can say okay we we, we had the possible um, technical failure and that means we cannot unlock a bike or the station unlocked a bike and now this this note of it has to be a specific bike can be removed because well we actually modeled this uh, in detail uh, in here um, yeah and then we also had the whole thing what happens if um we um if the station cannot unlock a bike and now we actually have we probably have more information to start modeling this eh? uh, i felt we didn't yeah. have enough but n uh, in the previous session but now um, we actually have okay so right now we're at the point where uh we're thinking or or yeah i'm thinking well Either we first continue towards the end, which uh, definitely is something we need to do, uh, or we dive deeper into this piece that we actually uh, we didn't completely neglect it uh, in the previous sessions, um, but we didn't completely continue it as well. At the in the current phase, I think we ha we start to have enough information to model this more. And the reason I'm thinking eh, that we have enough information and well, maybe another point why we could go deeper is also that it might influence some of the design decisions we make is that 
just if you look at proposing proposing a bike or propose to start a ride at a new station uh, we currently we're completely eh, we're in the station the station says it cannot unlock the bike um, we need to communicate that back and then we need to communicate back to the um, uh, to the yeah to the back end probably to the app as well uh, maybe to mm -hmm. the bike selection of a station maybe to the bike availability here we're going to go through a part of this process again but it's going to be a little bit different and it might maybe influence some of the choices we made um, in the previous section because um, mm -hmm. here proposing that bike is going to be a lot easier if the station can do that immediately then uh, in the other case, like we have it now, the station doesn't know. The station needs to communicate with the back and hey, can I propose a different bike? So that, that's why I'm thinking it's it might be useful to go into this right now. On the other hand, we could first move to the back um, and, and then and only afterwards go deeper. What do you think? Yeah, no, I agree. We decided to split this recording here. This video is already quite long and in the next section we're going to look at error scenarios and how our model can handle them. We hope you learned a lot from this video and you enjoyed it and that we see you again next time. Bye!